Germany. Now today, it is time to reveal my final specification for my soon to arrive Mercedes AMG GTR. And for the purpose, I'm gonna take a walk around this car in the green hell magno behind. First, we'll talk a little bit about the car. Then I'm gonna start running over my final specs for the car that's gonna arrive when deliveries start in the UK slightly later in the year, ready for plenty of events and fun activities ahead. So let us take a look at the beast of the green hell in all its glory. The four litre bi-turbo V8, which sounds pretty thunderous, making 585 horsepower, 700 Newton meters of torque, nought to 62 miles an hour, or 100 kilometers an hour is 3.6 seconds. The top speed is 198 miles an hour. And it set a pretty quick time at the Nürburgring Nordschleife, seven minutes and 11 seconds, which makes it the fastest rear wheel drive production road car of this form. Of course, behind the Porsche 918 Spyder and the Lamborghini Aventador SV, both of which being all wheel drive, but this comes in at a price point below those. So it's really rather special. Now I've been here today at AMG, taking a look around, showing the factory and also driving the C63 S. It's an amazing car as well, but today it's spec time. First, a couple of highlights just to point out. So I drove this car, or another like it, at the press launch at Portimao, which was a pretty spectacularly amazing day. Had a lot of fun playing with the drift mode toggle inside the car that I'll show you in a moment. But this is really the evolution of Mercedes racing. So you have the Panamericana style grille that's come in from the GT3 car here with the horizontal slats going across it. You have active aerodynamics with flaps positioned just under here that will open, of course, at speed. You can see there's enlarged cooling vents um, around the side and airflow uh, control here to, to ascend air down the side how they want it. There's rear wheel steer, the wheels turning either with the front wheels or against them, depending um, upon speed, so you get the maximum amount of control at high speed or cornering ability at low speed. Around the rear, you've got the quadruple exhaust, the twin center exhaust, and then the secondary exhaust at the side, which even have to have carbon fiber on the diffuser, just so that the paint doesn't get too hot. But that is a titanium system, which sounds truly ridiculous. So you've got the wing mounted on the rear, the positionable wing that can be adjusted, and you can even actually see the GT3 car lurking in the showroom there. But this is the launch color, the Green Hell Magno paying homage to the Nürburgring, where the car has been significantly tested through the development process. But it's created here by the team in a falter back. So it is time now to start talking specification. Let's kick this off then, firstly, with the exterior and the color of the car and the options that are gonna be on the outside. So the first thing is the color. Now I know when I got the brochure through and I was talking about it, I wanted to make the car something quite bright, but I kind of evolved that because what I really want to do is see it in different shades. So the car is going to be wrapped. I'm going to change the color of it after I take delivery of it into various different forms, depending on the events I'm going to and different things I've got going. I'd like to try green for a bit. I'd like to try yellow for a bit. It's the best of both worlds. So the car itself is going to be ordered in the non-metallic black because it will make a very nice overall specification when you hear the rest of my sort of details and everything that I'm gonna be ordering. Now I know some people will tell me just keep it black, but I like a bit of color in my life. I like bright and look, they launched it in this color Magno satin green. They wanted this car to stand out. I'm definitely gonna do that. But along with the black paintwork, it comes as standard with the yellow calipers. I'm not gonna order the ceramic brakes, which are gold because my car will spend most of its time on the road. So it'll have the yellow calipers, not these gold ones. I am gonna have these wheels, the RXC style wheels. They save weight overall. A little bit of unsprung weight saved on each corner makes for a slightly better driving experience. And they come in this dual tone black with the silver ring uh, trim around them. Now I'm tempted to convert the entire wheel and make it black. You can only have it in the two tone color from factory. Um, we'll see what happens on that front post delivery. Now in terms of other options, I'm gonna go for the carbon pack two which will give me carbon door mirrors, as well as a exposed carbon rear wing, which I think would be a very nice touch. That was an option that wasn't originally on the order form. It was going to be this gloss black um, around the car, 
but I felt that given it comes as standard with the lovely carbon fibre roof to save weight, it made sense to tie that in at the upper sort of level of the car with the carbon on the wing and the carbon on the door mirrors too. Now I will have gloss black plastic on some of the lower sections and the sort of satin black plastic down here. There was earlier um, an option for carbon pack one on the exterior which would have given you a carbon front splitter and gloss black here, but I kind of wanted to go with that because I think it works quite well against the sort of brighter colour which is definitely my intention. So you'll be seeing the car in a number of different colors. That's most of the spec in terms of what's on the outside. Just one thing I'm gonna bring the camera in and focus on the GTR badge with the yellow logo. I think that just looks really nice for some reason, stands out to me. But let's jump inside and talk about the interior. Conveniently, I have the key. Let's unlock and take a look at the inside. So mine is actually going to match the spec of this car in terms of the interior. I'm going to have the bucket seat because on my test drive at the press launch, I preferred the bucket seats to the performance seats. Plus, let's face it, this is a race car, race inspired sports car, shall we say, sports GT. So it's also going to have the Dynamica with yellow stitch. So the Dynamica Alcantara in the seat inserts um, and the lower part of the dash and the door panel um, with some leather sections as well. But with the yellow stitching you see around and the yellow seat embroidery, I've also opted to have the yellow seat belts because I just think they stand out awesomely. So that's going to make for quite a nice interior trim. You also have the Alcantara steering wheel with the yellow stitch around here too. And then in addition to that, I have also opted for the carbon um, interior package. So having the center console and carbon fiber and the area around the air vents as well. So it's going to make for quite a nice uh, interior sort of style. And by the way, I know I showed it before, but I love the AMG logo there on the center console. And while we're here, I felt the yellow tied in quite nicely with the drift uh, control, well not the drift, the traction control dial that you have in the center with nine different driving modes that I showed in a full video um, with Jan at Portimao. That was awesome fun, so you should check that out if you haven't already. But that is yellow in any car, so it made sense to tie in that yellow uh, throughout in here. Then for mine, I've also ordered the carbon fiber door sill, so I'll have the carbon fiber panel on there. And also, if I come round to the boot, Pop that open with the key. I've gone for the uh, retractable load cover, which is an option too, just so you can, I guess, cover the rear view when you've got the, uh, the cover down. After all, it's gonna be used for a decent amount of road trips and touring. So I think the only thing I haven't actually mentioned, oh, no, there is one more, is the uh, adaptive Distronic Plus, where you have the sort of uh, cruise control radar sensor um, and pre-preparation uh, if it detects that anything's going to happen safety wise but the only other thing I haven't mentioned is that mine will be the premium package um, and I'm going to jump in and the premium package means it basically comes very very highly equipped you have the 10 speaker Burmester hi-fi system which this one doesn't have actually um, along with the reversing camera and a whole host of electronics but let's just do this first because doesn't love that. This feels good. Setting back in my future car. I like the carbon strut brace behind there. So yes, there we go. You basically now know the full spec of my AMG GTR. It's been very nice to uh, have another look around this one, which is glowing brilliantly in the sunshine. I'm sure there'll be a number of people out there who will no doubt tell me I should keep it in black, and maybe I will, because I think the character of the car is very much cool, sporty, and would look pretty good um, as a sort of stealthy kind of what, beast. So maybe at some point down the line, you'll see it looking like that. For now, I'm gonna keep my first color choice secret. So you'll have to wait for that one when the car arrives. I don't have a specific UK allocation date yet, but I will be sure to let you know on my social media pages when I do. But for now, that is the spec of my AMG GTR. I'll write it all down below. Maybe I'll have had a play on the configurator as well, and I'm sure I'll pop that in too. So thank you very much for watching, guys. And I hope you've enjoyed all of the videos that I've been shooting here at the home of AMG in Germany. Thanks again, and I'll catch up with you soon. Cheers. The GTR is heading off for the moment. Doesn't it look good on the move though?